After a successful dry fit of everything, it's time to glue it up. I glue a spline in on all four sides of the center panel and then work my way around adding the frame. Adding the splines makes a really tight joint, but you get the added benefit that it keeps everything aligned during glue up. I draw everything tight in with clamps, and the results are great. The miters are tight, and the frame is tight to the center panel all the way around. After the lid is dried, I trim it to its final size and then sand everything flush. At the router table, I chamfer all four edges of the underside of the lid. I really think this is a nice look. It makes the lid not appear so thick and creates an additional shadow line where the lid meets the box. The exposed spline joints are great too. Now it's time to make the base. I cut a rabbit in the base material that the box actually sits into. I've cut a miter on one side, I hold the material up to the box and mark the location of the miter on the other side. I'll cut the miter using my angled tenon jig on the table saw. work my way around the box until all the miters have been cut and do a successful dry fit. The miters will be joined together with two number 20 biscuits in each joint. I mark the location of the biscuits Clamp the workpiece to the bench, cut the biscuits into the end of the board. Adding biscuits to this miter joint not only increases its strength, but it aids in alignment during glue up. Now it's time to make the arches in the base pieces. We're going to use a technique called pattern routing. I make a full size pattern out of half inch plywood by bending a flexible strip and drawing a curve. I cut out this pattern on the bandsaw, staying as close to the line as possible. After it's cut, I'll fare the curve using a flexible sanding strip. I transfer the outline of the pattern to the workpiece and then cut it out on the bandsaw staying about a sixteenth of an inch outside the line. I temporarily adhere the pattern to the workpiece using double sided tape. Here's a look at the bit that we'll use to do the pattern routing. It has a bearing on the top and the bottom. And you'll see how this comes in handy. I first use the top bearing bit with the pattern on top of the workpiece and I go halfway down the arch. This way, the router bit cutting with the grain. Stopping at the halfway point, flip the piece over, and now I have the pattern on the bottom, and I'll use the bottom bearing bit to ride against the pattern and cut the other half of the arch. Mm -hmm. 
Using this method, the bit is always cutting into the work and you get a lot less tear out. It's a really nice bit to have. Now it's time to assemble the base. I put glue in the biscuit slots and on the miter as well as on the bottom edge of the box. This way the box will adhere to the rabbit that we've cut in the base pieces. These corner clamps come in handy for holding things steady as I work my way around the box. I'll add a few more clamps and wait for this assembly to dry. After the base is dry, it's time to add some corner blocks. Each block is held in with two number 20 biscuits. This corner block is a good place to add your maker's mark. I need to make three mortises for hinges on the top edge of the back panel of the blanket chest. I'll do this by constructing a simple jig that will guide the router to cut the mortise. I've installed a guide bushing in the base plate of the router that were right against the sides of the jig. 